and the other one is toasty. Uh, <laughs> Do you remember that Twitter uh, GIF that uh, Toasty posted? It was like, hey guys, I'm at uh, I'm at Prime Saga, just posting GIFs from my phone because you know. Yeah, <laughs> he's actually on the phone at the same time too. Yeah, it was hilarious. But this is not the Toasty that posted GIFs. This is a completely different one. So yeah, not it's quite there. Between <laughs> Tyler and the actual Toasty from Soga. Exactly. Oh, but it uh, looks like. That's oh, funny. It, <laughs> the tag is the in-game tag is Queen, but uh, oh, it's, uh, he picks it because that's Makoto's um, code name in Persona Five. Gotcha, gotcha. Hey, man, you're gonna have to realize that in the Joker bracket <laughs> this coming weekend. So Toasty plays the uh, Palutena then. Looks yeah. Like. Alrighty. But well, looks like starting off already. Both of them are just going for fair, you know, low percent combos, not quite getting anything, and just whenever there's two low hits, then just uh, continues to break out of those combos with those. Combo breakers that both these characters have available, Balotena with the Fair and Wolf with the Nair. I do like how Joe's going for immediately, he goes for an option, he's trying to get Toasty off the stage, but the problem is that if you commit to those far tilts too many times, you are going to steal it at one point, but not only that, like your opponent's going to realize, okay, he's going in for a hit to go for forward tilt, so I need to watch out. Right, like he's going in for it so many times, yet again, another attempt here. It's a pretty good move to get off, get off, off me option, really good spacing tool as well. The problem is that like, you have to understand if you're Telling your opponent you're going for this thing. Yep, catches the spot dodge with that second jab. Puts him off stage in a position. Yeah, catches the roll with that forward oh. tail. And that's just one of the difficult things about Wolf. You kind of have to put yourself in the position to be able to utilize your strong recoveries like your Wolf Flash and your Wolf Up B. But if you can't get into the position, if there's a you know giant fireball that just sticks right in front <laughs> of you, kind of hard to position yourself for that. So great edge guard comes from Tessie. Great situational awareness knowing that Phantasma didn't really have too many options left when he was trying to get back to stage. Dash tag immediately doesn't go for any other option, waits for Gerald's landing, and fortunately puts him on the right side stage. There's the corner carry, no ledge for you. Yeah. Gerald's having so much of a hard time here. Back air, he puts Toasty finally off the stage. Can he get a forward tilt? Tries to go for the up smash on the get up option. That's the, that's the opportunity where you do want to take time to space yourself properly and go for forward tilt because you can get a punish on that one right. pretty easily, and you get a low commitment there. But, you know, Wolf just loves to be in the air, and if you have a character like Paul Tenna that just preemptively throws out the nares in such a long... Whoa! <laughs> he just I'm immediately you, appeared man. and then forward tilt just sent them all the way off stage. And it paid off, right? The spacing and immediately just understanding like when to angle your forward tilts properly as well. It, it paid off towards the end. But like I said, man, he's still going for it in the neutral, and I respect it. Like, he kind of wants to use it like a poke, but the problem is, like, you commit to the end lag after it. Yeah. Again, he's trying to find the positioning where he can recover, but every time Tosi is there ready with an explosive flame and just be able to tack on more damage. He's so oh. much better than uh, Phantasma keeping himself under cool and then knowing when he has the moment to strike. Yeah. Oh, I was about to say, man, like, if you would have spaced yourself just a tad bit, you would have cut the wall get up. And I feel like that's what Phantasma was waiting for. I was like, hold up, where's your, where's your option here from the ledge? Okay, good dab adaptation from Phantasma, noticing the flicker and decides to fade back a little bit mm -hmm. so that oh. he can still recover. But that four tilt lasts so long. Bad positioning for Wolf. Oh, and it was good that he countered there because he did, you got to understand, you don't auto stop the ledge and the hitbox that comes from it, the sweet spot, it could definitely hit you. There's the back throw, and that's going to be it for game one. Toasty takes game one. He's sitting in the premium chair because I totally forgot. Oh, Javi gave him the premium chair, I was going to say. <laughs> Yeah, so that's going to be the first game. I think <laughs> just in general, it looked like that Phantasma was just trying to find those raw kill, that raw kill power mm -hmm. with the up smash to forward smash. He tried to find the right pressure, but Tosi seems he's very familiar with the matchup, knows his opportunity to strike, and knows that he doesn't have to rush his opportunities. He knows yeah. that he can keep his time, keep his tempo, and then play his game with Palutena. Just keep a slow, steady consistency. That's the key word we're looking for here when we're looking at Tosi's play. Yeah. For Gerald, it's kind of coming back to like, he knows the spacing at the ledge. It's, his ledge play seems to be pretty solid, but the problem that he's having here is the neutral, right? He's just relying on one move. But now we're starting to see him implement a bit of a different game plan, finally finding some small combos. Yeah. That quick option was dash attack, just to be able to burst in, get a little bit of damage, and now got the corner carry one more time. What's the option gonna be? Tries to find a neutral getup, but still not quite able to find it. I mean, the streets. All right. Ooh, okay, just uses the up air to protect himself as well. There we go, the back air. 
Looks like uh, Phantasma wasn't quite ready for that reversal option. And again, the Wolf Flash, like you said before, does not sweet spot the ledge. And that's going to be the counter he was looking for on game I'm, one. I'm telling you, man, that's why he was going for it the last time. And when you're that low, you only have one option, right? Because Wolf Fire is not going to be able to help you out there. Ooh, that was really nice from Tosi. He actually did the Rar Nair just to be able to carry him to the other mm -hmm. side and still elicit pressure and get, to get another potential corner carry. <laughs> the back air. I like that he's kind of relentless from him because he knows like he's got him at the corner, right? It's going to be the one thing that knocks him out there is the neutral catches the roll, get him in the neutral landing. Oh, Oof. smash. These haven't been working out so well for him. That's kind of where the fourth looks like to become, become the better play. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a very great out of shield option, but against a character that's very safe on landing like Politena, mm -hmm. you have to be careful about that because you just saw it auto cancel automatically. He's able to dash away before even the pickup uh, hitbox could hit him. But the back throw finally going to be able to take a stock here. The ghost for the classic Smash 4, right? <laughs> back roll, back throw. <laughs> uh, yeah, we missed those. But I mean, it's more utilized because uh, you, know, you can't run through your opponent because of the lack of cross ups now. Yeah, oh, and another counter. No sweet spot. At, I'm sorry, no, no sweet spot on the ledge. Sweet spot attack on that one. That's, oh. what, that's what makes Wolf tough. Like, he's a top tier, but, the, but he does have his shortcomings, and he's already got the corner carry on the left side. Keep him out of the stage. Whose swamp does this belong to? Almost reading the neutral. Air on that one would have caught him with his own ultra air. Yeah, all right, there we go. The, the fair's trying to come in, but just doesn't quite find the right positioning for it and uh, gives up his control until he was able to reverse the situation. At this point, like, the fact that Toasty went forward and then dash attack, like, it's kind of showing that he has, kinda has a lot of control of the game. Oh, you see that? Toasty is very confident. He just <laughs> stood there. He knew that Phantasm was going to try to hop in, and he was able to get that anti-air with the four tilt. Just do the right spacing for it. Looks like Phantasma is just trying to find his kill option, but still, the damage is just tacking on. Another explosive flame. You see the fear, the directional air dodge, just trying to get out of the way. Oh, he was looking for the back air. That's kind of when he went for the double jump there. There's the neutral air gel. Yeah, out of the stage for Toasty. He's going to use the explosive flame because he knows where he's going to be going for. It's that low recovery because he doesn't want to get hit by upper. He doesn't want to get hit by back air. But you know what? When he's got that horizontal plane covered, he knows what options he should be going for. Yeah, it was just that platform was available, but mm -hmm. just the idea, the fear that Toasty could just go in <laughs> and yeah. potentially just hit him with a back air, a forward air. That Kalos transformation on Town City with characters with very strong airs like that is very scary. Mm -hmm. Just thinking about, oh, if I don't land in time <laughs> or if I don't <laughs> buffer my roll correctly or something like that, I could potentially lose my stock for it. But, you know, the explosive plane will be able to cover that as well. Exactly right. And we talked about it earlier, right, the planes of